everyone. Today we're going to make a ginkgo leaf. One of my friends asked me, how do you make those? So I thought today we would do it together. Here we go. So I'm going to uh, get going. And one of the things I want to mention first, though, be before I light the torch, is that normally we, I look in advance to say which way I want the mandrel to go and how. And with this, it has a pretty deep little V inside of it and we need the mandrel to go through there. So I'm gonna pick a smaller mandrel, a 1 16th mandrel for that area. It gives me just a little bit easier room for making a bee in it. And I noticed on some of my other ones that this has a deep V, this has a lesser V, it's not as deep. So, you know, do whatever works best for you. But I'm gonna show you using tweezers, uh, some uh, parallel mashers, just a couple of tools, we're, we're going to make the bead. So hang on just a sec, and away we'll go. I feel like it's St. Patrick's Day with all this green around me right now. Okay, so I need, oops, a 1 16th mandrel. just changed that angle there. Okay, now we're good. I'm attached by a wire and sometimes that gets a little bit awkward. So I made one earlier and this is what it looks like. I have the divot right there and then it comes out. This is wider right here. Can you see that? And then just a little bit of a stem. This is essentially what we're going to be making. It starts out like, well, kind of like a cone, a wide cone without a pointy tip on it, I guess. And I want to stop so that it's still on the shortish side because I need to bring up that glass higher up into that V area. So let's keep it on the smaller side because we're also going to be using tweezers to thin it out even more. And um, you don't need something big that's harder to handle. So let's start smaller. That's easier. So my widest point is going to be closest to my fingers that are turning the mandrel. And then it's going to get a little bit slimmer as it goes up. It's going to be the size of kind of like a large, well, a large donut bead in a way, except there will be just extra glass on one side of it. Okay, so I'm working below the flame, just getting some glass on. And this is just a, a medium transparent green. I don't remember the name of the colors. And while that's cooling a little on my mandrel, I'm heating up some more glass to go around the bottom. I do want this bottom area to have more glass on it than the top section. So we want that to pull out. Okay. And then a little bit in the middle. And then just a little bit more. And we're about there. Okay, so then I want to heat it up and marver it just a little bit. It will be on an angle, so we'll kind of do that. I'll give it just a sec. I'm watching the color on it before I marver it. And so when I add it on like that, and it's a little bit uneven when I'm adding it on, I'm looking to see whether there are any dark sections on it where you can tell that the glass isn't evenly melted. And that's what I was looking. Well, that's pretty small, but I think we can work with that. Give me just a sec. We're going to add just a tiny bit more at the bottom. You know, by the time that I end up pressing it and then start pulling it out with my tweezers, it ends up being a lot bigger than I think it's going to turn out. Okay. So we've heated it up. We're going to press it with my parallel mashers. But if you have tweezer mashers, 
at this size, you certainly could use them for that. You need to get it the right color for pressing. And see that nice juicy orange glow? That's perfect. I'm going to press it down pretty flat. I'm just evening it up a little bit. And we're going to be working with this glass and pulling it out of a ways. I think this is probably enough, but if I think I am going to need more on top, I'll just show you on this one. I add just a little bit extra towards the mantle, but not right on the mantle. So I just do like an extended dot across the top. See how that is? Just an extension. And that gives me a little bit more glass to work with because we're going to be manipulating all of this glass anyhow. Ha, it looks like little ears, doesn't it? So we're going to heat that in. And seeing that you have pressed this pretty thinly, just be sure to keep it warm enough, okay? So we're going to start one side at a time, and I'm going to heat the bottom section, just the bottom corner, and I'm going to take my tweezers, and squish and pull gently. I'm squishing and I'm pulling it out. Because you know, the base of the leaf is kind of flat along the bottom and then it curves around and up. We'll do the same on the other side. I'm heating just the base area. The trick is with heating and cooling, you wanna make sure that you don't have both sides hot at the same time. So I'm pulling it out a little bit gently each side now that I've done that I'm I want to round it up so it curves kind of in a circle and goes up with these sections coming up higher so what I'm going to first do is one at a time pull up some of the top section on each side so I know what I'm working with how high and I'm not going very far down I'm just grabbing the extra glass pulling up a little bit. There we go, we've got our divot. We're gonna do the same on the other side. I know it, do it doesn't look right yet, but it will, we'll just give it a little bit of time. Okay, so we've got our high points and we've got our wide points, so now we're just filling out the rest of it. Okay, one side, hot on each side, and I'm just gonna squish and pull. Now, what I didn't do in advance was get out a glass of water to chill my tweezers if they get too warm. You know what will happen, they'll stick if you aren't careful with it. See how we're rounding it out a little bit and this side needs to come out a little bit more on this edge because it doesn't come out in a half circle enough. So I'm heating that up. I'm just pulling it out a little bit more. Isn't that fun what you can do with glass? You can manipulate it and get it to do, go where you want it to go. And the whole trick is just not being too forceful, being careful and gentle, and heating it, cooling it. Okay, let's do this side now. We're still going to be adapting it more, but we just want to kind of get them about even. So we're pulling it out. And if I had a glass of water right now, I would be chilling my uh, tweezers. This side's up too high because it's kind of a flat thing. I'm going to pull it down a tiny bit. We're getting closer. I'd like this to be a little more rounded. It looks a little too straight to me. So I'm heating it up on each side because you can't move glass unless it's warm in the area around it. I'm just giving it more of a rounded shape. It's pretty close. See, this side's a little bit farther out than this one, so maybe we better even that one up a little bit more. Heating it up on each side. We still have more things to do with it, but we want to get it close to where 
we want it to be. And I'm looking where I have more glass to pull those areas first over areas that look thin to me already. And the areas that are thinner, you're going to see because they're going to look lighter. Okay, so next thing. The leaves that we see in the picture don't have these kinds of divots in them. They're a little bit flatter, even though they move and ruffle a little bit. So what I'm doing is very basically heating it, not too much. And I'm just going to gently press with my mashers. And what it does is it takes out the high areas. Just a little bit of heat on each side. And it flattens it just a touch. See, it takes, takes out the really highest areas. We're going to do the same on the other side. And we do want some movement in this, so we're going to move the glass around a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a little bit of movement in the glass in the leaf. So I'm heating up one section. And I'm just going to gently lift and twist a tiny bit. Gently lift and twist in one other area. Gives just a little bit of movement to the leaf. I can come up a little higher. Okay, let's do the same on the other side. Heat up just in one little area and gently lift and twist just a tiny bit. You don't want too much movement in this if you're going to be wearing it. Okay, so I just twisted it a tiny bit. And there's one other thing. The leaves kind of do this on the outside edge. So I'm going to heat the edge, just the edge, and then I'm going to gently indent it with my brass tool. And that also helps add movement to it just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it, but just in a few places, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. See how pushing it in, it adds a little bit more movement to it. So we're going to do the same on this other side. And I'm just heating the very edge, not a whole lot more. I don't want tons of movement. I just want a little bit of that. Okay, so now the very end of it, it has that little long skinny stem. I don't see having a stem that long. I think that that would not work well in glass. So what I'm going to do is make a shorter stem, or you may elect not to make any stem at all and use some wire to indicate it or some seed beads or other things. But if you're going to have one in glass, let me show you how I would do it. I'm going to pick a side, and both sides are pretty much even in how they look to me. So this side is the one. I'm going to put a fat dot down there. That's going to end up being the stem. I'm going to go around, heat the leaf a little bit, and then I'm going to go back and heat that dot. And then I'm going to take my glass rod. It's got a, it's not pointy, but it's slimmer on the end. And I'm going to pull it down into a straight line. So I'm starting three quarters of the way up, grabbing the glass, and just gently pulling it. So if you want it to be straight, do that. I'm going to keep it a little thinner than I would normally do it if I weren't wearing it. And then stop and flame cut it from underneath. What I don't want is for this to be too thin so that it's going to easily break. And I'm also heating up the top area so it blends in a little bit better into the leaf because I don't want the remnants of that um, of the stem where it attached as a dot to look too obvious. So I finished that, and uh, this is your leaf that you requested. Here we go, and that's kind of fun. And I would also say from looking at this that I think it's also the start of perhaps maybe um, a butterfly. You could make butterflies kind of along that line too. But for now, it's a ginkgo leaf. And thank you for joining me. Hope you had fun too. This is Marcy Lamberson saying bye.